this video now is going to be about the eyes or the eyes of the nose whatever whatever I feel <clears throat> somebody in the pan pastel group did uh, raise a valid point and I, so I'm really sorry I hadn't thought about it but she said she was enjoying the videos but needed to see a picture for it to help her which yes some people do need to see one i'm actually working off a screen and my ipad so i can't really fit that if if i want to get in and do detailed work i can't fit that in the screen as well um so i've printed it out just to show you which picture i am actually working from this is quite dark on here that's just how it's printed out for some reason um however it doesn't look like that when you're using the screen um i'm going to just turn the camera just to see whether you can see the screen i'm working from it doesn't really help much does it because it's quite dark i don't know whether it's because the light's on it or not but you can't actually see it But I work from that anyway, and I can't get that in the shot when I'm trying to work close like this so that you can actually see the detail I'm putting in. This is a picture. The picture is quite dark, um, and there isn't much detail on it, but I've put it into um, one of the software programs i've got and lightened it up just so that i can actually see the details well some details in the eye <clears throat> so i'm just going to make a start on that i'm using luminance here i can never read the writing because of that small C cpf 50 percent i'm going to use this just to put some detail in the eyes And this, some of the, I really do love the luminance, but some of them, they just feel like, they feel scratchy on the paper, and they just feel like really odd work. And weirdly, this is one of them. Thanks to being able to lighten brighten the contrast i can actually see that there is some detail he said they're just black blobs <coughs> shut up maisie postman's been already the camera's not in a very good place for you to be able to see what i'm doing really that's the trouble you, uh, you try to film your work but depending how you work you can't get the cameras at the right angle to see and so then you're putting your work how you need to be angled you're putting that at jeopardy really because i need to be at a certain angle to work so you can only do it which is comfortable to work with and it's not always the best angle then for people to see but obviously it's the best angle for me to work in and that's the most important a little bit of shine in the eyes there at the top so i shall just leave that blank for the paper to come through Now, <clears throat> it's, it's really hard to actually make out what colour the dog's eyes are. But knowing what Spaniel's eyes are normally like, it's probably like quite an orangey hazel kind of colour, which I'm going to go with. 
sort of like no that's too dark maybe let's have a look okay we've got a uh, polychromo sanguine 188 I'm going to add some colour with that. I've got my angles right there because will need to be darker than that okay i'm really loving these uh actually that's not what i thought it was is it let's have a look this is a bit too light the derwent pro colors are quite hard and it's hard to get any color out of them but the color uh derwent color soft on the other end I really love because they're just quite creamy that might be too light have a look oh too orange I got some that might be too dark as well we'll just see Oh, it's quite dark anyway it's gonna be gone over with brown black and darken it but i do like to put a base color in even though you can't see it i like to put the color in anyway so as it's there and it's a hint of and then you can just color over it so we've got the color soft here which is brown black Yeah, this is a thought. Blurred. Come on, you stupid thing. It's brown, brown, black anyway. C640 of the Derwent Colour Soft. Shut up. Maisie. Oh, good job I'm not live, isn't it? Oi. Go out, run out the back garden now to tell off the neighbour's dog. There she is. little bugger now uh, that will do now we've got I've got Lyra Rembrandt polycolor as well there oh, I think they're a great brand and that's what this is uh, gold orc because right there in the darkness there is like a goldy goldy color <coughs> It's amazing how many colours you can get for one thing. I mean, already, I've just started this eye. There's hardly anything down. And we have all these colours just for one eye. Building up them layers to get that effect we want. Oh. 
I think we've got a big meaty fly in here. Unless it's a bee. Gorgeous out there. And I can't, I can't get in it because I'm just too busy with this today. But I will have a coffee break in a minute and go and warm up because I can't feel my hands here in the house. <laughs> Crazy. Fry an egg out there and it's uh, chilly in here. That's why I've got a cardigan on. Oh, we're still at it. You, what are you shouting at out there, you naughty girl? Can't you just be quiet? Can't you be quiet? You don't wag your tail at me because you're naughty. Okay, so there, I, as you can see. Is taking shape. I do love the amber colours in the eyes there, but I've got to tone it down quite a lot to what you can see here on the picture. This is where the, the pink of the eye comes in. Now, I find this quite a good on this flesh. It's, um, it looks like a fleshy colour pink, but it's actually cinnamon 189 polychromo Faber Castle. Castell, however you want to see. I always say the name's wrong. Not going to change now. I've got the same on this side, but I'm only going to do one at a time. <coughs> and now I've got that perfect, then I shall move on to the other one. see here cocker's eyes are quite droopy not as uh, droopy as a basset but droopy enough that you can see some pink in the socket these colour soft as well um, I found that instead of using a black, there's another colour called, um, I don't know whether it's pet petrel, petrel black, uh, petrel grey or petrel, but either way, it's absolutely brilliant because it's not quite black, but it's black enough, so you're not, you're not drawing, as they do say, you're not supposed to draw with black, but I do, yeah, pet petrel, petrel. Grey C six eighty. Oh, this camera. Yeah. Don't tell you woke up. 
but yeah it's um it's really good it's not got the harshness of the black but it's black enough for what you need in the picture in your artwork just works wonders especially with the black brown as you can see I'm just adding some nutmeg to the eye area just to darken it down a bit the pink oh can't feel my hands <coughs> Do know it is good to have an understanding of um, you know a dog's eye in general the anatomy of the dog same as with horses <clears throat> so as you know which way hair runs and you know what shape a pupil can be it's really good to have that background knowledge because when you're in working in shadows like this it's really difficult to see anything so having that knowledge of how an eye should actually look, it's really helpful. A bit of a sharpen going on. It's good to have a nice point, a nice sharp point. In your pencils at all times when you're doing detail, really. That's my helix, my helix sharpener does that, sharpens to a great point. Oh. It's a bit too hard. <laughs> now we've got a grey here. The, the grey is in these uh, colour soft and brilliant steel grey. This is good because it's like um, the shine on the eye, on the black of the eye when it's wet. And it just causes a really good effect. Like it's shiny. As you can see. You see the steel grey there on the edge? It just looks white, uh, like shiny. Now, let's 
just get ready to do the second eye. Some um, British tracing paper, it's like kind of waxy, it's like a grease proof paper, and it's just brilliant for leaning on when you're working. I ordered a batch off uh, eBay, it wasn't very much. Well, worth it. Use a new one every time you start a new drawing. Now I can see in there a shine. We we'll use the steel grey for that one just to leave a reflection there. And then we can start working with, actually we we'll use the vitrell there, because it's very dark around a pupil. You spend so much time glaring into a picture to try and pick out details. Now, I need to put the same colour into this one. I'm not sure which one it was now. It's almost black in here anyway. But as I say, I like to put in a colour of suggestion. Just to suggest it is actually there. really is brown I mean if you look at this you can't even see anything in there at all I'm just so glad we've got programs like Photoshop and Corel to try and lighten these pictures that we get sent and the thing is sometimes when people when it's a, mem a memorial uh, portrait they are limited to what pictures they've got but that's why I, why I say always especially now we don't have to pay for films to be developed always just snap away because you never know when the time comes you just didn't take enough photos and that's just heartbreaking so take as many as you can I'm just putting the brown black to darken this area right up on the eye. Just another layer of dark over it. But 
what you see by putting those coloured layers on underneath for what the eye would look like if there was a light shining on it the actual colour of the dog's eye you can see them it just gives a sense of colour of what it was what it is what you can't see in the shadows so you know the whole point is not to say oh that's a shadow that's dark and just color it all in black or dark brown or gray put in the colors that would act that's why it's good to actually have a lot of reference photos because you put in the colors of what you can actually see in the other photos but then you go over it after with the darker areas from the photo that you're working from but you can then as well choose to keep it just a little bit lighter like you've done it in your own mind changed the exposure and brightened it up and then because the pans are here as well as you're putting your colored pencils on and blending them with the, the pans that are already there it's just so much um easier to work with because it's all it's all there for you then you just go over it you don't have to try and bear hard to try and cover the the white of the paper because it's already covered with the pans i just love working like this i've always i've worked in graphite i've worked in um pastels paint gouache but I really I really do love pastels but they make so much mess I hate the mess and I hate the way they feel on my fingers we haven't got any of that with pans you don't have to touch them if you don't want to there's no mess there's tiny minute little bits and that's mainly off the applicators which aren't great that make the mess they make more mess than the actual pastels themselves And then I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> the um, neighbour next door is doing something outside, and I can hear his power tools going off. He just distracted me, and I've lost my trail of thought. How rude! So trouble when you're trying to film at home. This eye is really taking shape now, but it just needs to be a lot darker. It'll come back to me in a minute. Now, looking at the lighter photos that I've lightened up. There's a lot of pink there. It was like a an orangey colour, but pink as well. So let's get it all in. This is the cinnamon again. I use this a lot with um, skin tones. And obviously, in the eye, it's it is quite a Pinky flesh colour. What's this here? I always keep some paper at the side of me just to check your colours. <coughs> I haven't got time to do a big colour chart, so I'll just pick up the colour I think it is, check it on the paper, and go for it. No messing really. Because even when I even when I've got a colour chart, I still check to see whether the colour is going to be the right colour I need. You do what's best for for you really how you want to work this is mild terracotta funny name isn't it mild because there's like two layers of eye i don't know what you call them but they're the layers of the eyes there's two 
showing here. <coughs> we'll just get that in. A little bit of detail, darker areas in the well, I'll call it pink because that's what I'm using it for, but it's cinnamon. Putting some details in there. I know Bonnie does a lot of uh, videos like this in real time and just sits and works on a piece. I've not done it because I like to. I don't like to think that I'm being filmed. I just want to get on with it. But I'm going to try and do this for you guys and do the whole process of this. Is that the black brown? Yes. That was a lot of red here of the coat around the eyes. When I'm doing the hair strokes, I tend to go from side to side like that, flicking it out so as you've got different tapered ends at both ends of your strokes and not just having like a cut off, cut off straight line. Like if you just keep doing that, as you can see, you've got like a fat square in there and then it tapers off. But when you go like this, backwards and forwards, it's an even. You've got tapered ends at both ends. Oh, you learn something new every day. Over here is where the start of the curly ears come in. So just section that bit off a bit. Just bash the camera in. It's so close to me. It's literally like another hand away from me. So it's easy to knock it. That's got a definite, a definite line there, but the shadow just blends it, blends it all in. I'll just add a darker, a darker part just to make sure it looks like it's in the shadows. And it, as you can see, it looks really, really dark, really, really black. And I still haven't used black yet. This is pet, Petrel Grey. Um, as I say, it's, oh, it's just fantastic for 
the dark bits. I just ordered a couple of days ago. I ordered some more. Two more of, of each of these. Because they're just brilliant. Okay, now... Because it's so creamy as well, you can just keep adding the layers with them. I was a bit put off by with Derwent when I bought the Derwent Pro Colour. I just really weren't impressed with them at all. They were just too hard. If you're working on a really light subject on white paper, then they do come in for, you know, like white white animals or white feathers. The lighter pencils are quite good for that. But literally, that was it for me. I just thought, oh, these are naff. Because last year, I just went through a process of buying nearly every set of pen coloured pencils that were out on the market. Um, and they were one of them. And it, they just really put me off to Derwent. And I don't know what happened now, but I saw an offer for these uh, colour soft and um, I ummed and ahed and thought, oh, no, they weren't very good. Do, do I do it or shall I leave it? And in the end, I just went for it. I thought, oh, sod it, I'll have a go. And I'm so glad I, did, glad I did because I haven't stopped using them since. They're just, they are really good. So I'll take it back, Derwent. You do make some, some good pencils. This is a good set. Oh, it's a black brown. Right then, I'm absolutely frozen. I can't feel my fingers or my feet. So I'm going to stop this here. Now we've got the eyes in. Because we have... We've done the eyes. Put them in and we want them. And if you think this is the picture... Now she can see. Okay, right, I'm going to go for a coffee break and then I'll resume and make another part of this because this is 38 minutes anyway. So um, I'll go and have a break and then I'll come back and resume on to the next part and we'll do the nose. So I hope you enjoyed watching the progression of those eyes. Um, if you like my work and you like my tips and my work in progress, please subscribe, give me a like or a share and I'll see you again. Thank you. Bye.